Hey, hey guys, welcome to the workbench. Uh, today we are looking at Kovoza Vodi Prostojov's Spitfire PR Mark 10. Uh, now, I've always loved this aircraft. Um, quite unique when you look at the, the Spitfire um, in pink. Uh, now, this is their new tool for 2022, as you can see. Uh, and we're going to start this now. So, let's have a little look to, at it to begin with. So there you can see that's the box art, very nice. You can see why they used pink as a camouflage when it's up against this sort of dawn sky. Uh, on the back side of the box, we've got the three different options. So we've got the, the pink one that we will be going with. Uh, we've got this uh, gray and blue, which I've done with a, an Edouard High Flying Mark Seven. Uh, and then we've got the, the PR blue on the back as well then. So very nice. Inside we have a single bag that has everything we need. So we've got our uh, instructions. You can see our decals there. It's a very small sheet because basically the three options only have those three different um, roundels. Uh, and then if we get into this we can see the two main sprues and if we just have a look at the plastic you can see that's very crisp uh, now like I say those of you who saw my Tempest video uh, and you I'll put a little link in the description above uh, you'll know that I was really impressed with the plastic as it looked and then had sort of fit issues when I tried building it. Uh, then also we've got the clear part there. So you've only got the option of a closed canopy. But yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to start building this and see whether we have the same sorts of issues that we had with the last one, uh, the, the Tempest, or whether we're going to have a lovely Spitfire kit. Uh, I'm hoping for the latter and yeah, let's see what we come up with. So the wheel wells on the wings uh, are very similar to the Edouard uh, construction. Uh, slightly less pieces, which is a good thing because I, I hate that construction, I must admit. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm working on the interior cockpit and I'm pinning it together with tape for now. Uh, there are no locator pins, so same issue with the Tempest. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm using the extra thin cement. Uh, I struggle to imagine how you do this without a cement like that um, because really you need to pin it all in place with tape and then slowly sort of work your way through the seam um, and let's say like a precision cement like the Revell stuff um, that's just going to melt the plastic so yeah like I say I think that is your answer um, and it works for me, but if you haven't got that, then this will be a little bit of a challenge. Many clamps, and that's the wings together. Um, so after that, we move on to the radiators, um, which you can see here. Uh, then the wheels go together. Uh, but yeah, we're going to now move back onto the fuselage and get this cockpit area together now that that has hopefully had a chance to set right well that's the fuselage pretty much together uh, as you can see this is going to need sanding rather than filling uh, the, the filler the cement has obviously melted the plastic quite nicely so that they adhere together uh, and like I say, we'll, we'll fill that in, so we've got more of a, a recess rather than a divot and therefore we shouldn't need too much filler. Uh, that's the wings together and yeah, we'll just sort of get those attached and we should have something that looks like a Spitfire. There we have it, looking like a rather beautiful Spitfire right now. Uh, obviously, let's do a bit more work on it, but yeah, it's starting to get there now. As you can see, I have now primed the Spitfire. So what we've done here is uh, after priming, we've had a look to see where the gaps are. We've given those a bit more of a sand. And we've also 
gone with a darker shade of grey just to give it a mottled effect um, because this is going to be all one colour. Um, so hopefully this mottling will create some different shaded tones. Uh, yeah, and let's see what that looks like. Uh, I've now got to mix up a pink. Oh, there you have it. One pink Spitfire. Well, obviously we'll let that dry. Uh, we need to do the invasion stripes on the uh, tail and then it will be up to the decals. There you have it then. One pink Spitfire. Uh, so what we need to do now is the invasion stripes on the tail, get the decals on, bit of weathering, uh, then stick the propeller, undercarriage, exhaust stacks on, um, and yeah, almost done. I'm just masking off the invasion stripes now. As you can see, I'm using different tape just to cover that up. And we have this one here, which I believe is six mil wide. Uh, perfect for DA invasion stripes for 170 second scale. And what I've done is I've taken some of that and I've just counted it. Oh, won't focus. There we go. Oh, I've just taken bits and counted five across. So that's the three white and the two black, and that's given me my width. Uh, so then we'll spray that white, then we will mask off the white bits, and then obviously do the black. And that'll be the invasion stripes done. As you can see then, the decals are on. So what we need to do now is get some weathering powders uh, in these gaps uh, and basically weather this so that it looks less pristine and more more realistic uh, so yeah let's crack on there you have it then uh, so what we've done is we've taken the weathering powders and we've just gone into each of the little seams and what we will now do is pull that back a little bit so that you can see the panels underneath and obviously underneath we've gone for a bit of a bit more of a wash and what we'll do is get some oil stains going there and on the top there well as you can see uh, we've got some really nice detailing going on there and what I love about these weathering powders is that they do just pick out those panel lines and they give you a very nice sort of natural wash finish that uh, you, know, you can get with oils and stuff like that but I'm yet to find anything that really beats these powders. You get a natural residue that just sort of sits over the paint and looks very natural as long as you're consistent with your um, sort of brushing of the powders off um, with the kitchen roll uh, in the same direction as the airflow would be uh, I always find that you get brilliant results and just have a look on the underside so you can see that's looking really good like I said we're just going to get some oil washes on that and that should look awesome so yeah quite happy with that well, just the last finishing touches on the pink Spitfire then. I uh, just need to do the tail wheel covers, um, let the current undercarriage dry, the exhaust stacks need to go on, and the yellow tips. So next time you see this, it will be a finished kit.